Hillasson Company were timber merchants in England. In 1930, Hillas made a contract with the Russian government through Arcos to import 22,000 standards of wood. A standard is a unit of quantity. The contract included an option clause which read, Buyers shall also have the option of entering into a contract with sellers for the purchase of 100,000 standards for delivery during 1931. The rest of the clause stated that they were to receive an attractive discounted price. Hillas exercised the option and ordered 100,000 standards of wood on those favourable conditions. The Russian suppliers sought to avoid the second contract, presumably because they could now sell the wood more profitably elsewhere. Hillas sued. One line of defence was that the option clause was not enforceable because it didn't say what the terms of the contract would be for the purchase of the 100,000 standards. It was merely a promise by both parties to reach an agreement. In contract law, an agreement to agree is not a contract at all because the parties haven't actually reached mutual agreement on anything. They're just kind of predicting that they will. Lord Tomlin said, it was argued that there was nothing more than what has been called an agreement to make an agreement, that is, something which in law is no agreement at all. The House of Lords found, however, that this was not merely an agreement to agree. There were sufficient details for the option to be treated as an offer, which was then accepted by Hillas. The second argument was that the contract lacked essential terms because it simply referred to 100,000 standards, there was nothing about the quality or the type of wood or the shipment details. The court decided, however, that a contract should be preserved if there seemed to be an agreement. The court filled in the blanks based on the previous dealings between the parties, finding the option was for Russian softwood of fair quality. Lord Tomlin referred to the essential principle that dealings of men may, as far as possible, be treated as effective and that the law may not incur the reproach of being the destroyer of bargains. From this case, then, we learn that an agreement to agree is not a contract, and that the court might imply terms into a contract where it can do so fairly in order to preserve the contract. Mm -hmm.